Welcome back to this and the final section of the Live and 30 presentation. In this section of the presentation, what we're going to do is take what we have as a fully working application and we're going to add additional features to that application just to give you an idea what some of the capabilities are with the tool set that comes with PX Plus. So we're just going to restart here in our basic directory. We're going to change our directory to slash global. And I have some data files already preset up as if we had additional information given to us in our sample environment here. So we've got a customer master file, invoice master file, and invoice lines file. And I'm just going to copy them over here from my work area. CUSTMERS.CSV to dot. We'll copy live 30 invoices. And we'll copy live 30 slash INVOC okay and these files are, again are just standard CSV files let's just take a look at invoices here and actually VI is a shortcut on our system here that we use it to bring up notepad so you can see that it's basically just information it's got an invoice number client number and so forth in the individual data records. Okay, so we're going to start off with we're going to use Nomads again, and we can actually launch Nomads by the way directly from the designer up here. But I actually prefer just using the command. Oops, command line shortcut of NOM. Okay, so we'll use the CSV file import that we used the first time, and we will try to import these files again. Bring up the customer's file. Have analyzed that. Now it's read the file and picked up what it saw was the largest of any of the field names. So, for example, the largest client name was 30 characters. So, we're going to go clean this up a little bit. We'll make the client names 30. We'll make address 1's 30, or sorry, 40, 30, 30. City, we'll also set that to 30. Email, make it 80. I think it comes down here as we have some of these fields here. We'd like to make these currencies only because we'd like to have the dollar signs come up there. So we'll import that file there. So that brought the customer file across. We'll now bring the invoice files across. It's a slightly larger file. These are actually fairly large data files, so it takes a second to analyze them. Again, do some small little tweaks in here. Uh, we'll decide to put the address lines to be 30 each and the city to be 30 as well and the amount we'll change that to currency tax also be currency and we'll import that and we'll let that finish wrapping up it creates the file and we'll import one more here invoice the lines to analyze that file. This one's all pretty well good. I might just change the product description up to 40 characters long and the price will make that a currency as well. Okay, so it's going to go through and produce that file for us. Okay, so now we've actually converted our actual data files. Let's take a look at the individual data files on the system. And you've noticed we've now got all of them. Now, in order to run this, what I want to do is I want to produce a query that is going to go after all the invoices based on the product code. So that means really I'm going to need something on the invoice line file, which has all these data elements. I'm going to need to have a key on there based on the product code. So let's add a new key here, product code. And just to make sure that they're all unique, we'll do that as well. So we'll add that key there, and we'll just update the file with it. And we just pull that down the screen. This is what the screen would look like. And we'll just convert the data files. And I don't need to keep the backup. OK, close that down. So now let's go back in here, and we'll try and create our query. We'll call it query order. It's a standard query going to go against the invoice line file. And it's going to get the invoice line file. And we're going to go with the product code. So that's the sort we're going to come up with. And for the purposes of the display, we want to have, obviously, we probably want to have the invoice number. Probably don't need the actual line number or the product code. Uh, 
But what I do want to do is I do want to link this into another file. The invoice lines links me back to the customer file, but only by going through the invoice file. So let's go and add a file link in here. And we will come in here and we will make this the invoice file. And the field name that comes from the system is invoice number. That's the field name on the invoice file. And that happens to be the same field on my value. So I'll apply that. So let's now link those files. So if we look at that, we now have all the fields available for the invoice file as well. And in the invoice file, we have a field called env.clientid. So now we can link to another file. We can add another file link in here. We can link up to the customer file. And it's going to be linked on the env.clientid field. So that'll take that from there. So we now have those two files linked together. We have customers, invoices, and so on. So we want our output to be invoice number. The next column we probably would like to have is the client ID. Probably then want to go in there and have the client name. Maybe we'll include the client city. And we probably would want on the invoice, you may want to have the invoice date and the quantity that was ordered and maybe the price and maybe we'll add a formula in here too and let's just put and we'll call it and that would actually be item quantity times price and it's width is going to say let's say it's 10 and let's say it's dollar number 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 Oh, my number number 0, 0.00. That may actually be more than 10 characters. Yes, okay, it's 11. Okay, so now if I want to test that, it'll go off against the file, and this is what we get. So if I bring this out here, these are all the products that we brought up, the extensions and so forth. Now, this actually went through the whole file and brought all the different product records out there. So what I want to do, since I'm going to use this as a query inside another application, I'm going to actually go and put on the system a filter, and I'm going to say the filter is going to be an expression, and it's based on going to be, well, let's take the field names here, it's going to actually be the prod code, which is the code for the product. Okay, I should have actually had this up here, product code here. Actually, it's product code. Uh, it's going to be product code. Let's get the right field name. Okay. So we're going to apply that, save that off. Now let's take our main screen. And I'm going to make the screen a little bit bigger. So I'm going to pull this portion of the screen down. And I'm going to highlight all these fields here. We'll just take these fields here. And we're just going to alt edit, move them down, and I'm just going to drag them down to the bottom. Now here, I will put in a list view. So I selected the list box there, and I didn't select the list view. Let's select the list box and do that. Okay, and I'll take a list view, and its attributes are going to be that it's a list view with report format and it's going to auto load the table and the trigger is going to be whenever the product code changes and we'll just do one additional condition here it should be product code not equal code basically what that does is that says we'll only load the data box or load the data list when the product code is not equal to quote quote. There's no sense in us going through and pulling all the products off the file. So we just want to have it only do this when the product code is null. Okay. And then in here for the query, we just pick the name of the query that we were using to go and run that. So then I can save this. And if I hit test, oh yes, we just have to sign on here. Security is important. And if I now call up that, these are all the orders on the system based upon that particular product. Okay, so now we have this individual screen with a list of all the orders by product and all the invoices. Let's just do a few more small little changes here. Number one, I'm going to modify this chart or this 
this list just to go in here and I'm going to change it to do a full line highlight. That just means if I ever highlight a line it'll light the whole, whole screen across. And the other thing I need to do the list box is since this is a file maintenance program underneath, it checks the field called change flag which basically tells me all the entries on the screen have actually changed or what entries have changed. Well in this particular case on this chart I don't want me changing lines on the chart to actually affect that change flag. So we have to add one little line in here and it's going to be called to basically set a value to list box one which is the name of the control set no change to equal one and that basically says that it won't actually pay attention if I change that particular entry. So now if I test it here and I come up with a screen I can go up and down and I can cancel out and it will work just fine. So we'll just save that. Okay. So now we have our basic screens all ready to go. And if I come up here, so now if I say process products, there's my screen all ready to go with the query. Now, let's take this a little bit farther. Let's go and take this and add on to this a uh, chart based upon the invoice dates and the amount that was actually purchased. So to do that, we use the new version 11 feature of adding charts to list boxes. And so I'm going to have it design a new chart. And it's ordered by month. OK, that's my name for my chart. And we'll make it a column chart. And it's products bought by month. Just by month. Let's make it fairly short there. And what we need to do is we need to take the extension and we need to have it sum the extension. The extension is the price by the quantity. And we want to group that against the invoice date. Now the thing is on the invoice date we don't want to obviously include the day and the month. So if I just take from the first digit here up to here and I hit apply, it tells the system that it wants to actually group this from 2012-01. So with next year and so forth, it will add that on. And I will have it add a legend to the data as well. Don't have any filters. I want it to automatically update. Let me just take a look at how does that chart actually look here. So that's the basics for the chart on there. Now I just have a simple chart display there. I could probably also go and have the system uh, if I decide to select the chart type, I could probably also change that as well. If I didn't like it that way, maybe I want to go by bar charts or line charts or whatever. But anyway, I don't need to change that. So we'll finish that off. So now the screen has the ability to say display a chart. And there's the products by month. And as I scroll through my customer, my records, it'll actually automatically update the chart. Let's just make sure I have them both on the screen at the same time. Notice that the panels were locked. And basically, it'll automatically follow all the updates on the system as we go through. OK, so let's show you how this looks when we run it through the web server. OK, so now we'll call up to the web server. And you'll have to sign in again. call up a screen and you can see all the data comes up and I can tell the system that I want to display a chart and there's my chart let me move this back up on the screen so it all fits up kind of nice Got a little problem because I'm trying to actually give you both pieces of information at the same time and we can actually go through. Now you can change the format of the charts. This is using a flash built chart, but you can have it use a Google chart or an R graph chart and so on and so forth. But it does give us the ability to see all the individual items that are in the chart. It gives us all the information, the dates and whatnot. Now we could fix this up a little bit. We might want to change this so the date would include like January, February, whatnot, 2012, just by changing the contents of the display in the list box. And, and which comes from the query and then we just obviously adjust the chart. And you'll notice that the chart actually just is free floating on the screen when you're talking about running across the web. So that takes care of basically showing you some of the new features on the product. So we've shown you additional functionality on the CVS import there. We've also shown you how you can link files together using the standard query tools on the system, how you can put filters on the queries to just show off the particular products, 
take the queries, load them automatically into list boxes. Uh, from there, you can then attach charts and other controls to those list boxes to provide a fairly fully functional application. And this has all been done in, well, it's a little over 30 minutes if you're actually following along here, but basically in well under an hour, uh, which would be difficult to do with any other tool out there in the industry. So I'd like to thank you for watching and uh, hope you enjoy using the product and uh, hope you learned something. Take care. Bye.